Wei Jingwu on the Huai River, meeting an old friend from Liangzhou. Once we were traveling between the Jiangsu and the Han. Each time we met, we drank together before moving on. After we parted, we were floating clouds. Ten years passed by, flowing like water. Now we are happy again as then, but we are older, our hair is turning grey. You ask me why I don't head homeward. I point to the autumn hills above the Huai. So, long time no see. I'm afraid I've been a bit busy lately and I haven't been able to uh, record the videos as usual, but I hope to be uh, going back to routine now and to continue posting poems from the 300 Tang Poems collection. So, today we have a poem by Wei Jingwu. We've already read quite a few poems of his uh, in uh, previous sessions. This is uh, one out of two pentasyllabic regulated poems by Wei Jingwu. I think his forte, at least from what is reflected in this collection, is the old style uh, pentasyllabic poem. A very brief reminder about Wei Jingwu in case you just don't remember who he was or, or, or you haven't watched the, the videos about him, especially the first ones. So Wei Jingwu is a um, late high Tang, early mid Tang poet. That is, most of his production, I believe, uh, corresponds to the very late years of Emperor Xuanzong, the brilliant emperor. So his, most of his poems and most of his relevant activity took place just after the Anlushan Rebellion, that is to say, after 756, and, but before the end of the, of the, of the century. And he was you know, relatively well lived. He lived for most, long lived, he lived for most of the, um, of the um, eighth century. Now, Wei Jingwu is interesting for a couple of things, which I'm not sh sure we mentioned previously. First of all, his background. He was from a very important aristocratic clan. And uh, this is significant because he didn't have to pass the examination. So he led the life and wrote the poems of a scholar official. But strictly speaking, he, he wasn't a scholar official, at least from the point of view of not having taken the Jinshi and passing it. During the Tang, it was still possible, if you were from an aristocratic background, to have direct access to some minor positions in the administration. In fact, during Xuanzong's reign, Wei Jingwu was a bodyguard of sorts. I imagine one of many bodyguards of Emperor Xuanzong. And after that, he, he occupied a series of minor positions as, as, as provincial governor, as prefect of different areas, most of them concentrated in the in the Yangtze River, uh, especially the end of the Yangtze River Valley. In fact, this poem was presumably composed when he was in one of those uh, prefectures close to the end of the Yangtze in uh, Changzhou, I think. Uh, so, he is a scholar official of sorts, even if, 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 if not one that passed the examination. We've already seen poems of him in which he, he, he acts as a host to scholars in his prefectureship. Uh, traditionally, he has been associated with nature poems. So most of his poems tend, or at least the ones that are perceived to be the best or the more representative ones, are poems of nature in the style of Tao Qian or among his contemporaries, perhaps of Wang Wei. There's poems describing natural landscapes. But uh, this is not one of those. This is rather... Um, a typical example of, 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 the, uh, of the, the, the poems that scholar officials interchange among themselves as a social and cultural act. Remember, writing, reading poetry, writing poetry to other scholar officials is a, a social act. It marks you as part of the community of the scholar officials. So what's the topic of this poem? The topic of this poem, the main topic we could say, is uh, meeting and parting with friends. Remember, Parting is a very common topic, probably the most common topic among scholar officials. Uh, parting poems are made at a, at a meeting where one parts. So this is a poem uh, written, presumably, after Wei Jingwu had finally met another scholar official whom he had seen ten years 
previously. Uh, and who now, through a happy coincidence, happens to be also uh, floating in a boat down the, 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 the Huai River. Uh, poems of parting always denote sadness at the parting, and uh, sometimes they include an over-the-top description of the merit of, of the person from whom one is being separated. And poems of parting usually are also about the passage of time, as is this case, uh, lamenting um, uh, when in, an, uh, in a remote and unspecified future the poets or the friends who meet in this poem, will meet again. In fact, here we have this rather explicitly. Uh, Wei Jingwu and his unnamed friend met ten years in the past and they meet again, and now they're old. Yeah, so the happiness of the meeting is turned slightly bitter at the passage of time, which is always a sad and melancholy theme. Uh, so those are the two main themes, really. So parting and meeting, you could say, and uh, the passage of time. And there are the minor elements, minor tones. Uh, you might say there is a slightly uh, regional or descriptive element because mm, uh, the poem talks about meetings in different places in the past and in the present, meetings close to water, uh, to famous uh, rivers in China. And uh, the last line could be interpreted as a call uh, for retirement. So as we usually do, let's... Uh, Take a look at each of the couplets of the poem, one by one. So first couplet. Once we were traveling between the Jiangzi and the Han. Each time we met, we drank together before moving on. So the first couplet locates us in the past. So as opposed to the title, which locates us in the present, it seemed the present being the Huai River and... Uh, a meeting of a friend in the present, the first couplet takes us back in time. So you, you could say, as usual, in, in the beginning of, a, of one of these poems, it acts as a background creator. Yeah? So what's the background to this meeting at the present in the Huai? It's a meeting in the past between the Jiangzi and the Han. The Han River is uh, one of the affluents of the Jiangzi. It's in middle China. So in an unspecified time in the past, Wei Jingwu and this man from Liangzhou met probably more than once uh, on the Han River Valley. And as scholar officials are prone to do, they drank, they enjoyed each other's company, and then they moved away. Second couplet. As we parted, we were floating clouds. Ten years passed by, flowing like a river. So the second couplet, as we've already mentioned lots of times, is the first of the parallelistic couplets, where each character of the five has to be Parallel, each character of the, th the third line has to be parallel to the five characters in the fourth line. Um, generally, parallelism is accompanied also by antithesis. That is, uh, you have one word of a certain class in the first line and another word with a slightly antithetical meaning, but belonging to the same conceptual or grammar class in the second line. And here the parallelism is quite clear, at least in the two images, floating clouds, uh, flowing river, flowing water. So we had this meeting, what happened? Well, we parted like floating clouds. We've seen this image, it's a trite, um, a conventional image. Uh, floating clouds represent uh, uprooted scholar officials or hermits living in the mountains. You know? So it represents the movability of a human destiny, of, of, of how one uh, has to go all around the country. Remember, mm, Chinese scholar officials uh, were not too happy about having to go to the provinces, whether in exile or whether for an appointment, because that meant uh, abandoning the gilded world of the capital and the company of other scholar officials. And sometimes the provinces they were sent to govern were very far away from the capital and very far away from a coterie of other scholar officials. So uh, even when the postings were lucrative or prestigious, you know, they were seen as, you know, as a form of of, of, of public duty, but personal mm, suffering, this service. So we parted like floating clouds. And what happened? Ten years passed by, a long amount of time, flowing like a river. So the image of time as a flowing river 
It's a very conventional one, not only in Chinese poetry. It's also very typical in Western poetry. I'm thinking of one of the greatest of uh, Spanish poets, Jorge Manrique. Nuestras vidas son los ríos que van a dar a la mar, que es el morir. Our lives are the rivers that end, that, uh, end, in, the, that end in the sea, which is death. So the passage of time, the passage uh, of, of the water, is also a very common idea in China. I think there is a quote from the Analects, probably, of Confucius, which says more or less something like, the river never stops for anybody, it just keeps flowing on and on. Water stops for nobody. So two images of movement, of movement in nature, floating clouds uh, and uh, flowing water, the flowing river, flowing like a river, and they're, they're very adequate because at the time of the meeting and at the time that this poem is presumably being, being composed, Wei Jingwu and his friend from Liangzhou are on the water or next to the water. I mean, they've just met on the Huai River. And they've been in the past on the Han River. So very, very adequate natural images. And, you know, both emphasizing movability, uh, impermanence, uh, and uh, the impossibility of rootedness even when it is desired, as rhetorically in this poem it is. Like, uh, we might imagine Wei Jingwu would like to enjoy the company of his friend in a permanent sort of basis. Okay, next couplet. So, we've got the meeting, we met in the past, time has passed. So the, the, the third couplet, which is the second parallelistic couplet, has a bittersweet flavor. It contrasts the happiness at meeting with the sadness of aging. Now we are happy again, as then. But we are older, our hair is turning grey. Mm, so, doesn't need much comment. Mm, becoming old is a melancholy, sad topic in all cultures and all traditions. Even more so in the uh, Chinese tradition where there isn't quite uh, a belief, or non-equivalent non belief, as in the West, in a paradise uh, after death that is better than, than this world, necessarily. The last couplet that summarizes and concludes. You ask me why I don't head homeward. I point to the autumn hills above the Huai. So the last couplet is quite ambiguous. You know, I've, I've seen it dif interpreted differently in, in, in different versions of this poem. So, so the, the friend asks, why aren't you going home? Where would home be for Wei Jingwu? Well, I imagine it would be Chang'an, the capital, because his family was from that area. So uh, the Liangzhou old friend asks, so why aren't you going home? And uh, Wei Jingwu answers without words. He points to the autumn hills above the Huai. So one way of interpreting this is that uh, he is advocating the retired life, you know, by, by pointing at the hills of the Huai. He might be pointing at uh, the fact that, you know, he is going to, he is planning at least to, to retire in those hills and uh, leave the hermit life. Of course, this would go completely against the grain of the biographical uh, historical data we have about uh, Wei Jingwu. We know he, uh, he continued acting as a prefect until his death and ruling different prefectures in the Yangtze River area. Yeah. Uh, other interpretations have taken this as an invitation. So instead of, 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 of saying, of, 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 of pointing towards the area by saying, I will retire in, in that area, he would be inviting his friend, let's go over to that area and enjoy the autumn sights of uh, the, the, the Huai River Hills. But anyway, whatever the interpretation, there is this poignancy of, uh, there's this desire of uh, extending pleasure and of, uh, if you take the first interpretation to be valid, of uh, this perennial uh, wish of scholar officials of renouncing the world, even when it's just a cliche and it's not, not, not really authentically felt. So this is Wei Jingwu's uh, poem about meeting a friend. Uh, when I mentioned the great uh, topics of the poem, uh, parting also includes friendship. But we don't get many details about this friendship uh, in this poem. It's a rather unspecific friendship because the old friend is not named and uh, no characteristics apart from the, 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 the bacchical conviviality of the past are mentioned. So well, we don't get many details about 
the, the friend. So, well, okay, quite a, a conventional, a standard poem, both in theme and in images and in subject matter, but okay, it's quite nice.